Hey, well, hello everyone. My name is Jalen Motley. I'm a program coordinator here at Vitalink. I want to thank all the students, parents, educators joining us today for our first Huntington Beach Union High School District CTE Pathway Days Panel 2. Um, I hope that most of you were able to tune in yesterday. I know we had a great panel, so I'm hoping today's is just as amazing for you guys. I want to thank our great group of panelists for giving us their time today to be here and speak to you all. I'm really excited to hear what they have to share. There are, there are many educators here, so I'm expecting it to be a great one. And before we get started, there are a few quick announcements from Ms. Marilyn, and I will give her the floor. Hi, my name is Marilyn Kinney, and I'm the Huntington Beach Union High School District Career Technical Education Facilitator. Um, just a little bit about what is CTE. It provides students with the academic and technical skills, knowledge and training necessary to succeed in future careers and to being lifetime learners. So everyone here, um, our panelists are CTE teachers, and we are so excited to hear about their different programs. Um, in our district, we have over 40 CTE pathways, and um, students that do successfully complete one of our pathways, um, you will receive an honor court at graduation. I'm going to be dropping a few links, our link tree with our social media, and um, some of our flyers to share more information about CTE. But we have a lot of information that is on the Socio app. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Julia. Hello, everyone. My name is Julia Budd, and I work for Cosign ROP, and ROP is yet another acronym that uh, educators love to throw at you, which stands for Regional Occupational Program. And I see that somebody had already asked a question, what's the difference between ROP and CTE? So basically, the ROP um, houses CTE teachers. So it's, a, it's essentially um, very similar. We just were our own entity, like Huntington Beach Union High School District is its own entity. So is Cosign ROP. We have two um, different teachers that teach for Hun Huntington Beach Union High School District and then te CD teachers that teach for Cosign. We have afterbell um, classes, which means students can take classes in Tustin Unified, in Irvine Unified, and um, we have five different districts that we serve. So that is Huntington Beach Unified um, School District, Newport Mesa Unified School District, Tustin Unified School District, Saddleback Valley Unified School District, and Irvine. So, um, and then to kind of um, clarify from what uh, Marilyn was saying, there's 15 different industry sectors, and within those 15 industry sectors, there's 58 pathways. So the fact that Huntington Beach has 44 of those pathways, that's pretty amazing. Um, and as far as at Cosign ROP, we offer um, 11 uh, industry sector courses um, out of the 15. And I'm also... Oh, Julia, you accidentally muted yourself. <laughs> Oh, how funny that is. Um, <laughs> um, anyhow, I just um, dropped our link tree. Um, and on that, you can see our homepage. You can see our Afterbell schedule classes that I was referring to. And you can also see the um, interest list for next fall. And our registration will open the week of April 25th. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Marilyn and Ms. Julia. Um, let's get started with some introductions from our panelists. Um, Lorena, will you start us off with your name, title, and your CTE pathway that you teach? Sure. 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 Hi. 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 Hold on one second. Let's see, no worries. Okay. Let's see if we can try again. All right. Okay, here we go. I think I got it. It had Sounds opened good. two different, um, you know, screens, and so I couldn't figure out which one was the the right one to use. Um, hello, I am Lorena Emerson, and I am a teacher at Fountain Valley High School. Um, in CTE, I teach the Legal Practices Pathway, and it consists of criminal law and business law. Great, thank you, and Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah McCants. Um, I teach uh, at Fountain Valley High School as well in the CTE um, department, and I teach in the entrepreneurship pathway, and I also uh, I teach Virtual Enterprise 1 and Virtual Enterprise, the capstone class. Thank you, and Danielle. 
Hi, my name is Danielle Collins. Um, I teach pro professional music at Huntington Beach High School. Um, some of the classes I teach are in the Academy for the Performing Arts. Uh, the CTE courses I teach are um, songwriting and recording and advanced professional music. Great, and we will go to Leah. Hi, I'm Leah Bratcher. I'm a teacher at Marina High School. I teach three different pathways currently, uh, fashion design, interior design, and culinary arts. And Nick? Hi, I'm Nick Schwab from Huntington Beach High School. And I've been, the last nine years or so, I've been teaching uh, digital media visual arts um, pathway and next year launching and moving into an entrepreneurship pathway. Um, as well. That'll be uh, cross-curricular. So I'll explain a little bit more later. Cool. And Maria? Hi, everybody. I'm Maria Georgiakopoulos. I'm from Huntington Beach High School, and I teach the culinary arts pathway. I teach uh, culinary arts one, advanced culinary, and I am the SCCLA advisor. Great. And lastly, Corey. Hi, I'm Corey Reyna from Fountain Valley High School. I teach in our culinary arts pathway. I teach um, the culinary arts one, advanced uh, culinary, and also advise FCCLA. Great, and I'll just go ahead and start this next question with you, Corey. How does your course prepare students for success once they complete your class and what real world experiences can they learn from, from you that they'll benefit them in college? Sure, um, I don't think my, Pathway is unique on some of these things in terms of um, the real world skills, things like time management um, and working as a team player or on a um, in a group in terms of um, like in a kitchen where everybody has to do their part um, to bring it together for some one uh, individual uh, piece there. So those are some big examples. Um, of course, technical skills as well in terms of culinary arts also. In I think um, we do really well in all of our pathways to um, prepare students for what they need to know um, specifically in the culinary arts on that level. But I think um, in general, some of those soft skills, um, we do interview skills and preparations for landing a job as well. Great, Great. thank you for sharing. Um, Ms. Lorena, how does your course prepare students for success once they graduate from your class or complete your class? Yeah, so I would say that um, my pathway, I really try to expose them to different opportunities and experiences within the legal field. Um, we normally in a non-COVID year take a couple of field trips. I'm going to try to take one this year. Um, one is to the Orange County Superior Court where we engage in a docent-led um, tour of the court, and that is done by former um, individuals that were in the legal field that are now volunteering their time, and so they get exposed to many different um, things there. We go into drug court, into traffic court, or into a, um, a felony trial, um, and then we go to a museum up in LA that details the entire history of law enforcement. Um, I also bring a lot of guest speakers into the classroom. Um, tomorrow, for example, I have an individual who is a law enforcement officer um, with Santa Ana Police Department that's coming in to talk to the students about, you know, what it's like to um, be in that field and what it takes to get there and just kind of the day to day. And then, of course, the, the fun, exciting stories as well. But um, trying to engage them in real world content and letting them see what it's what it's really like um, mm -hmm. allows them to decipher what they may want to do in the in the legal field. So I would say that that allows many of them to, um, you know, be successful. Great. And Sarah, I want to ask the same question to you. What real world experiences are student learning from your class and how are you preparing them uh, once they complete your uh, program? Yeah, um, virtual enterprise actually, I think, is one of the uh, most realistic type of uh, classes you could take as it, as it compares to a job. They start their own company from scratch, and instead of coming to class, they actually come to work every day. Um, each employee has a different job, and they are doing that job throughout the semester and also competing um, with that job. So we have anything from business plan, accounting, human resources, and it really lets every student kind of find where they see fit. And when they leave the class, they don't only have the soft skills, but they have a job skill to kind of be successful in any array. If, if they want to go into culinary or they want to go digital media, they still have those skills they learned to be a great employee. 
Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Um, Danielle, do you care to share um, what real world experience are students learning in your pathway? Absolutely. Um, so with songwriting and recording, um, we're sort of getting the students ready for the professional music industry. Um, so we're starting to give them the soft and hard skills to write their own music and then also, also um, distribute it. Um, we have, um, we're a, a licensed artist on Spotify and other platforms and we help our students um, work with other producers and get that music um, developed and arranged and then distributed. So they're kind of learning how to do the bare bones collaboration, recording, that kind of thing, and getting their original songs up and running. Um, they participate in a lot of um, community performances. We started partnering with the um, city um, in a lot of different venues that um, they've afforded us. So there's a lot of um, contractual opportunities for the advanced mm -hmm. students where they're now um, planning and programming the gigs. Um, they're running um, the contracts. I have a couple standing weekly gigs that some of my students have gone out and contracted. Um, and then we have um, some industry, some local industry partners that have sort of helped um, sort of build those opportunities up that created mm -hmm. more opportunities for them. And so we're getting to work with um, a couple local partners um, and the advanced group is, is really, like I said, it's about managerial, um, right. but we're really trying to teach the life skills through music and not just those specific music skills in hopes that they can take their confidence, you know, from developing those contracts or building that set list or running a rehearsal into a job interview or whatever sort of realm mm -hmm. they desire. That sounds, I can imagine how intimidating being in that industry is so that's great that you guys give them so many tools to help them once they are out of your out of your hands um leah i'd like to hear what you would have to say about your pathway and real world experience for the students well i i hate to say it but my two favorite pathways <laughs> are fashion and interior design and guess what everybody wears clothes and everybody lives somewhere, right? So I feel like everything that I, and then culinary arts, right? Everybody eats every day. So I feel like everything I teach is relevant. Everything that I teach. And I'm always thinking industry. I'm always working with industry, um, speakers from industry in both areas. But in Orange County in LA, uh, we employ more people in the fashion industry than New York does. We have an entirely different uh, twist here. LA is the denim capital of the world. So anything that is denim basically is, you know, the headquarters are there in LA. So there are jobs here all over the place. And interior design, I mean, oh my gosh, we have so many different, um, not just warehouses, but places where designers go. Designers sell their wares. Designers are, right. are known and influenced. and. And the money is here. So there's a lot of money. And it's not just residential. Everybody thinks, oh, cute, decorate the house and curtains and pillows. But there's a huge industrial area as well. And we don't think about RVs and planes and boats right. that need to have an interior designer know the materials and the weight and what's going to sell for those kinds of things, right? Okay. So the projects that we do both in fashion design and interior design have to do with exactly that. We look at not just, you know, making a shirt for your house, but if you worked in the industry, how would you, uh, you know, make 500 of five different sizes and thinking about your yield and your cost and your materials yeah. and interior design, we're always learning about materials as well and colors and concepts and ideas. So, um, all of my kids and all of my classes make an online portfolio because they need to leave my classes with all the materials and tools that they've worked with. We do a lot of technical stuff. They learn about the um, computer programs that are used in industry. They know about a variety of different schools that they can go on and further. Um, everything is real world uh, experience and and I do a lot to talk to them about different jobs and different avenues and not to just get so focused, right? Everybody in fashion yeah. design is like, oh, I'm going to be a designer. But, you know, in a company, there can be 5,000 different jobs. And same with, um, you know, interior design. So my classes are two-year pathways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it all leads up to 
giving you what you need to further your education. Great, thank you so much. Um, Nick, I'm gonna ask you two different questions. I want you to answer the real world experience and what courses are offered in your pathway and typically how long does it take to complete those? Okay, um, yeah, and I, just to add to that, last, uh, we're probably about to double all the interior designers we need to, to fill the metaverse and, and places like that in these virtual spaces that are gonna need kind of the same exact design skills just with a different, different yeah. tool. Um, but uh, jump in if I forget part of the question. I was supposed to say yeah, you're so, so, um, yeah I, I guess to kind of add on to what everybody else was saying, uh, you know, a lot of that occurs in our pathway too. But I think one of the things that, I, and I've taught a lot of different subjects over the years, but one of the things that I really love about CTE is that the focus really is from the start on the future and what the kids are doing there rather than just having the kids do well on the standards for that year's class. Um, the standards really are designed for what they're, you know, how to help them once they're out of the class and, and beyond there, which is really kind of the exciting part about career tech ed. Um, and so, uh, and, and one of the big things is trying to help them become active in, in their learning um, rather than a, a passive participant, which can happen sometimes in school. And I think that's really one of the big skills that um, you see in a lot of our great CT pathways. Um, for the real world experience, um, when we started this, I guess, 10 years ago, um, we started as a business. The advanced class became a digital media and design business. And so we ended up doing most of our school's team um, photos. Um, there were paid jobs run by students. And over the last 10 years, I think we've generated about $90,000 that have come back into um, our program through student, again, students doing all the work. And, and that, that didn't count the last years that we kind of lost. Um, yeah. that, where we couldn't do that. So most of that was really done in about seven years. And so um, the goal going forward now with the entrepreneurship pathway is to kind of use that same structure, but to broaden it so that it's not just photography or, or digital media and design so that hopefully it can um, be a space for kids that are interested in, in, in different areas to kind of yeah. get that, like I said, that real world experience. Um, and so you asked about the classes too, right? That's yeah, what courses uh, do you uh, offer? Okay, yeah, so the, the new entrepreneurship pathway that was kind of started last year and it's been kind of a weird time, but uh, uh, we basically have a, a cross-curricular pathway that is uh, linking a US history and design class with a digital media and design class for um, juniors where they're able to get CTE, history and art credit um, at the same time. Um, going through that and doing collaborative projects kind of all in one. And then it leads to the capstone course, which will be uh, offered for the first time next year in honors business entrepreneurship. And so that's kind of a two-way pathway. There, there, are, there is also a pathway for the design visual media arts as well, mm -hmm. but this is the one that we're really trying to build up right now at our site. Awesome, that sounds amazing. Um, Maria. What courses are offered in your pathway and typically how long does it take to complete those? Hi, okay, so in my career pathway, um, I offer Culinary One, which is the introductory class for a year. And then we um, offer Advanced Culinary Arts to complete the pathway. So it's a two year um, path. And um, the second part you said, how do I relate it? Or yeah, real world experience in your pathway. Right. So for real world experience, um, what we do, what I do is we cater in advanced culinary, and um, we've kind of taken, you know, we, we kind of go. The school really loves us now. We do the senior treats, we do the dessert tables, we do the Ed Foundation night. Um, it's uh, we're, this, we just got a new job. Next week, we are going to be catering for APA, their dinner. So um, the kids are really learning firsthand experience. And the thing I love the most about it is, you know, food, food is very, you know, it's either good or it's bad. And um, I love saying, swipe, swipe the cupcake, that's terrible frosting, and redo it now. And they're just, oh! You know, and so that's advanced culinary and they know it cannot go out unless it's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of real, real world experience. And then um, 
I've mirrored a lot of my class curriculum, like the, the levels of what they're learning based on like OCC and some of the classes. Um, so they are learning like the beginning steps. And then when they go on, they're learning like, like if you learn one cookie at, at you know, Huntington, you're gonna go on to OCC and you're gonna learn four variations to that. And that's kind of how that works. And so it's really good. And the last really important step is going to be that once you complete advanced culinary, you're also going to have a certificate in sanitation and safety. So the students actually contact me all the time and they're like, I need to get another copy of that certificate. I got a job. I'd like to present that. So a lot of them are working already outside and kind of getting their feet wet um, in the industry right now before they even move on to post-secondary. So it's really exciting. It's Thank you for sharing. Um, Corey, I'll ask you the same question, just uh, courses that are offered in your pathway and how long can a student expect to complete those? Okay, um, so I'm sorry, one second. Okay, sorry, my son's in here. Um, so, um, so, in terms of how long to complete my pathway is two years for culinary arts. Most of our, our um, pathways at FHS are. And so students are able to, um, like Maria said too, in terms of certificates, um, we offer um, safety and sanitation. They get, as Maria said, they all get um, their uh, food handlers card and opportunities to go beyond that. Um, with that, and again, really jumping into um, the industry. We also partner with ProStart, which is um, with the California Restaurant Association. And so um, as a partner school with them, we're able to um, uh, compete. We're able to um, uh, partner in similar ways. We partner with other groups like VitalLink um, for speakers and field trips and things like that yeah. um, and have mentorship programs um, through, um, through um, those opportunities. So I, those are some ways um, looking at um, speakers in with um, the CIA and those types of things as well or other culinary schools. And so with that, we're able to, we're able to, um, and bring some things in in those over the course of those two years. Um, and so between those certificates and things like that, students are really prepared for being able to um, really jump into entry level or as Maria said, going on to um, culinary, different culinary schools, whether it's um, our local partners of like OCC and Cypress College um, to um, the higher level schools of like the CIA or Johnson and Wales. Thank you so much, Lorena. Will you please share with us what courses are offered in your pathway and do you guys help students uh, identify any volunteer opportunities or internships? Sure, so uh, my pathway legal practices is a two year course of study. It is um, criminal law followed by the capstone course business law. Mm -hmm. And yes, definitely as far as internships and, and volunteer opportunities, um, I bring in the law enforcement officer that is um, that heads the Explorers program at Fountain Valley um, Police Department, and he speaks to to kids about joining Explorers, which is a great way to um, find mentors and to network mm -hmm. if they want to go into law enforcement. I also um, encourage students that want to go more the attorney pathway or even like corporate, really any type of of legal pathway or legal. Um, career to um, look into internships with the um, Veterans Legal Institute. It's in Santa Ana and they um, partner with both high schools and colleges and even those that are going to law school um, to get them involved and to, um, you know, see some of what it, it, it's like to um, become an attorney and to provide these services pro bono. So they actually um, offer a lot of internships there as well. Great, thank you. Um, Sarah, yes, I saw you unmute yourself. You were ready to answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so through Virtual Enterprise International, we have are linked with a mentor in um, a business department. Uh, I'm sorry, business around the world. Today, actually, we were on some phone calls with Sweden and France, so it was kind of cool. Um, Virtual Enterprise will link them with a local mentor that's um, actually in the business industry right now, a statewide mentor, a national mentor, and an international mentor. And through those people, uh, the students have received a lot of scholarships, um, 
not only mentorships, but internships. I have a couple students um, right now who are um, interning at PricewaterhouseCooper for accounting who wow. got that hookup for virtual enterprise. Um, and then the trade shows and competitions we go to, there's at least four or five different um, job fair booths that students can attend. So um, any kind of link with the real world job is uh, always available for them. We also have a lot of guest speakers come in from the local community to talk about how they started up their companies. That's, I can imagine how helpful that is to hear from a real, a real life yeah. person in the industry explaining the ins and outs of that stuff because I know it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, Danielle, courses offered in your pathway and any volunteer opportunities? Yep. So um, I said in my intro, the courses that we offer are the songwriting, recording, and the advanced professional music class. We also have a few intro classes to offer that sort of feed in um, primarily a guitar class. We have a vocal production class that we're working to get approved through CTE, um, but it's offered as an A to G course right now. Um, and then also a music production class that we're looking at building a CTE pathway into. And we have a level one and a level two course with, the, with that. So any of those could act as a decent intro class to mm -hmm. our um, to our concentrator and our capstone of songwriting, recording, and advanced professional music. It's recommended to get through the program in three years, but a, a very eager student could do it in two with just a year of songwriting, recording, and a year cool. of advanced professional music. Um, we do have some internships embedded. So um, some of our students are actually working with um, some of the local churches running audio and video mm -hmm. um, for some of the, the services. Um, primarily at First Christian Church. We have a lot of students that go directly into that um, once they're seniors. Um, and then we also partnered with their worship band. So we actually have some of our musicians oh, that are that are helping with their teen worship services. So that is like our, our direct link is through mm -hmm. that church. And it works out because we actually um, host a performance there in November. Um, some of the other internships we're, we're developing are like small local ones through some of the restaurants and cafes that we are um, sort of building in um, residencies, if you will, who right. are, are allowing us to come in weekly and perform. Um, those students are getting converted to having a standing job. And so we will end up performing um, as a or, or providing music as a resource for say once or twice a month. And then that student will be asked to play for pay additional additional um, days in the month. That way that business gets once a week. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. It's kind of, it's really rolling into a job offer for them. Um, but we've also got a couple students in um, training in different production companies mm -hmm. that some of our alumni have developed and, and kind of latched on to. Um, and they've invited our students to come in and do some interning and that kind of thing. So it's it's very um, gig-like, if you will, just like the music industry is, where we have yeah. a lot of just different piecemeal things going on. And our students are trying to sort of collect um, a profession just like musicians would. All right. Thank you so much. Lastly, Leah, um, courses offered in fashion and interior design. Um, the courses here are fiber arts and design first year and then fashion design the second year. And fiber arts and design is learning more about textiles, fibers, how things react, chemical reactions, all that good stuff. Now, where fashion design, we cover the big scope of everything, not just sewing. There's a lot that we need to cover because we articulate with Orange Coast, so we need to uh, meet some of their standards. And then interior design is interior design first year. It's actually called environmental design. And then the second year is advanced environmental design. Um, mm -hmm. And those students work a little more independently. They have bigger projects that they have to do, but you definitely have to take first year of the interior design to get to advanced. With the fashion, if something, um, because there's not, there's only one class of each, if you can't take, you know, fashion design the second year and you need fiber arts, you know, first or second, what have you, there's a little bit of wiggle room there, but we're really trying to keep it even because that makes it much easier for right. kids to learn. And internships are a little bit harder in both of those industries. Um, mm -hmm. So many fashion design warehouses, for example, and interior design, you need to be 18 in order to do stuff. But okay. that doesn't mean there's not opportunities. You just have to know where to look. Right. Great. Thank you. And Nicholas, we will come to you for our next question. I'm going to combine two together and just ask you, what three skills 
Uh, do you prepare students with before attending college and any advice with that in joining your first CTE program? Um, yeah, so uh, I, I know it says three skills and I was, I was trying to come up with the three skills and I figured I wouldn't be the first one to answer this, so I'd be repeating it. But um, so I, I, I did one um, for right now. Perfect. But um, <laughs> and I think especially after these last couple of years um, is adaptability. Um, I think that's one of the key components. I think that's what you're seeing out there in industry. I think it's what you've seen in different, you know, different businesses and organizations and individuals have had to really um, do, especially over the last two years. And, and you know, one would assume that that'll continue to be something that we'll have to do um, in kind of a rapidly, rapidly evolving um, economy and society. Uh, and so, like I said earlier, kind of being more active and engaged learners and kind of setting up that mindset that, you know, wh whatever skills or uh, tools they le learn in school probably won't be the ones they're using 10 years later in a career. And so having that ability to transition and change and, and keep up with the, the change and requirements out there is, is kind of the mindset that we're, we're really trying to develop um, in there. I forgot, was there a second half on that question too? Yeah, and just advice for students who are interested in enrolling in a CTE program. Um, yeah, I think I think the big thing is trying to reach out to the teachers as much as you can um, to hear directly from them, other students that have taken the program. And then I think one of the cool things about a lot of CTE programs is, is we have a lot of really great marketing material um, for our classes so you can get a, a better in-depth look than you might on just the course catalog. Because I think a lot of the course catalogs, if it's a three or four sentence description, really probably doesn't do justice to a lot of the amazing stuff that's happening in the CT classes. Yeah. Um, so look out. Um, I'll put my link here in a minute, but we have a, a website and it's created by the students, managed by the students. I don't even think I know the password to log into it um, now that I think <laughs> about it. Um, but I'll put that in there because um, I know a lot of CT programs definitely have an online presence that shows you um, what you'd be doing in there rather than just yeah. reading about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, Lorena, same for you. Um, what advice do you have for students in uh, their start in CTE and what three skills do you hope to prepare students with? So I would say in the legal practice pathway, we definitely, um, they definitely gain analytical skills. We are analyzing cases and taking an in-depth look at cases in both um, criminal law and business law. And so that's definitely a skill that they can take into any other subject matter and life in general. Um, reading and writing skills, um, definitely something that I impress upon because they need to be able to read content, read precedent setting cases, and then obviously write in pretty mm -hmm. much every capacity um, in the legal field. And then just oral articulation, um, you know, being literate and being able to present a legal argument is really something that we focus on um, in the pathway. As far as CTE, I really encourage kids to, to get their feet, feet wet and try different things. And, um, you know, I think that CTE pathway classes are so different than our normal elective classes on campus. They're much more engaged. They're they're very real life as far as the experiences and opportunities that kids get to to engage in. And so I really encourage all students to, to take a CTE class that then much of the time turns into taking the pathway. So yeah, that's about it. Great, thank you. And Sarah, what advice do you have for students who are interested in enrolling in a CTE program? Um, like what they said in, um, in the before, it's just talk to a teacher, talk to a past student, even though you know, I'm gonna major in business or be in business, Business is, like Leah said, these are everywhere. Where, what you're going to learn from these classes, you can apply it to anything you want to do in the future. And a lot of my students that joined the class had no idea they were into like human resources or accounting or multimedia design. Go and try it and see how you like it. And it's a great opportunity to do it before you get into college. I always say, why don't you try it now while it's free and mm -hmm. you can transfer classes before doing this and getting your major all set and you realize you kind of hate it. There, you know, my CFO for this year ended up hating accounting and now he's in my design department. But it's good he did that now because he would have been, you know, majoring in accounting at Fullerton like he wanted to do and decided to hate it. So try the classes, talk to the teachers, go visit a class. We have so many 
opportunities you can go see the events and just kind of see where you might want to fit in. Yes, and it's cheaper to do it this way also instead yes. of going into <laughs> debt when you're waiting until college to decide what, what works for you. Yeah. Um, Danielle, same question. Uh, three skills that you prepare students with before college. Um, the th three skills I would say are um, work ethic, confidence, and competence. Um, and I definitely believe exactly what Sarah says um, as far as how to find the right program for you. You got to get your feet wet. Um, coming from somebody who went to two four-year universities, I did it wrong the first time because I didn't go there and check it out and see what I was getting myself into. So um, I got to echo what Sarah says, make sure that you find the program that's going to fit you best before uh, you jump in feet first. Yes, exactly. And I do want to hear from Leah and Sarah. Leah, I'll come to you first. I know we covered a lot, but any last minute uh, words or advice? Um, yeah, and I do want to talk about the three skills because one thing that I think is really important is an elevator speech. Just a quick three minute, a little bit about you to show again confidence and that you can talk about yourself. You can eloquently speak and say something when you meet somebody and you're not totally flustered, right? If you kind of have that planned out, what you can say, I think that's just an excellent thing. And um, we hear all the time about how kids need computer skills. And even though they use computers all the time, right? Having the specific skills for the specific jobs, things that you really need, an Excel spreadsheet, um, you know, how to do spell check on everything, all those little details, all the little details I talk about details always. So kids can go on and be very successful in all of our fields and all of our CTEs if they're passionate about it, if they like it, if they ask the right questions, um, they can really do great things. Super exciting. Yes. And Maria, any last words? Um, yes. So as I listen to all this, it's all perfect and on point, but for culinary, what something really important is positive attitude, willingness to try, and a passion that you find. And um, I, I write this on all of my courses, my syllabus is everywhere. I always tell them that food is life and that whether or not you're going to find a career in it or figure out you hate a career in it, um, those are all really important things. Uh, but you will be feeding yourselves and you will be having hopefully dinner parties and people who come over and it's nice for people to come over and say they had a nice meal at your home versus yeah. they can't wait to go home and hit the drive through <laughs> So um, I just, and, and something that I learned at all the panels that I listen to as chefs and everybody is that they talk a lot about, they can teach the skills sometimes, but they really need the positive, willing, passionate people. So that's all. Absolutely. And as we come to a close, I do want to thank everyone who came and joined. I really hope this panel did help any students, parents, educators in participating. And I am gonna share my screen. So hold on one moment before you guys head out. Make sure that you guys are taking advantage of all the information on the website. Make sure you're browsing everything the um, schools have to offer and reading up on their descriptions, any flyers they're posting, links, photos, really take a look and see if there's anything you're really interested in. Oh, sorry, and we are gonna take a few more minutes um, to look over the chat, any questions you guys may have dropped in there that we can address for you before you head out. Make sure to follow Vitalink to stay up on any new updates, any events coming up that you would also want to be registered for. And thank you so much to our panelists. You guys were awesome. I'm sure the students and parents loved listening to what you had to say.